What's going on, folks? Feels really weird to do that little sit-down intro. I've seen other people do it, and I don't know. I just have weird opinions about it. Anyway, I want to talk to you guys in this video about testing methodology because I get a lot of questions, especially after cooler reviews, like the one we just uh, published yesterday. You can check it out right here if you haven't already. Uh, and uh, I want to talk specifically about why I test, what I test, the configurations in which I test, and then address some super weird comments because uh, there are always a few of those. So I guess I'll go ahead and start off with a weird kind of idiotic comment uh, that I received yesterday and it was followed up by more moronic and idiotic comments by the same person in the same thread, which is disappointing because most idiots are, are convinced that they're right, which makes it even worse. So this person says, there is no point of testing coolers on CPU that isn't soldered. So sorry, but this test is worth exactly nothing. He's referring to our uh, Dark Rock Slim Verse 212 Black Edition review. That is what temp is exact on both. I thought that you are more acknowledged not to make such rookie mistakes. Okay, so when I posted this on Twitter, uh, a few of you were quick to point out the, the flawed English. Uh, look, I don't know where this guy's from. I, I'm assuming it's a guy, uh, but I don't know what his native language is. You know, he might be in the first year of English. And if that's the case, that's really impressive. Like, yeah, he got some words wrong and misspelled a few things, but that's really good uh, for someone who doesn't speak English natively, who doesn't, doesn't learn that language um, up front, you know, when they're, when they're very young. So I try not to knock on the English, especially if I'm suspicious of whether or not that person is a foreigner. Uh, so so that, that aspect aside, the issue that this person seems to be bringing up is that because the IHS is not soldered to the die, my tests are inconsistent. And to that I have two points. The first is that if your only standard is that the CPU die be soldered to the IHS, then uh, that's not a very good standard to uphold because if you look at the 9900K, for example, that solder job I would regard as pretty crappy. Uh, and it does not mean under every circumstance that you're going to have lower temps overall. My second point is that who cares about lower temps? Even if that was your goal, the idea here is consistency. And if we're talking about a thermal interface material that's, that's similar to thermal compound that we use on top of an IHS, right, between that metal heat spreader and a CPU cooler, it's still going to give you consistent results in the long run. Unless it is just like, you know, I can't even really think of a scenario where that would be an issue unless the, the Tim was not completely covering the die or, or somehow not making contact with the IHS. But um, you would be you would be made aware of that fairly quick because the CPU temperatures would, would skyrocket and you'd probably thermal throttle almost immediately. So unless that's happening, it's probably an okay uh, solder or uh, Tim spreading job, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but he went on. Uh, he, he went on to continue pushing this notion. And that's the I think that's the most dangerous part about it is people who are so blindly convinced about things uh, that, that have no factual basis or ground are super devout and super just... You know, you can't convince them otherwise. That's dangerous. Ignorance is bliss. And uh, to this person, I'm sure, uh, I don't know, the earth revolves around the moon. So he continues by saying, just retest it properly, please. No matter if it will be FX, Ryzen, or any other CPU, just make it real. You even used carbon pads, but forget the basics. You need soldered CPU to properly test CPUs. <sighs> Again, Okay, if this was true, then I would say at least 50% of all CPU and cooler reviews out there by all the other tech tubers on YouTube and you know websites, whatever, they're all wrong. They're all inaccurate because most Intel CPUs, at least up to this point, have not had soldered IHSs. So um, that's one point worth mentioning. Also, the he, he touches on the use of carbon pads. He's talking about the Carbonaut Thermal Grizzly pads that I've used in cooler reviews uh, since we reviewed the thermal pads in this video. And there's, I try to stress this in every video as well. The reason why I use those Carbonaut pads is because they're extremely consistent. You can reuse them over and over and not notice any performance degradation. I mean, it's literally carbon. Carbon's not going to disappear, right? And I know this, of course, assumes that there's going to be some variance with thermal paste application. And a few channels have already concluded that unless you do something super weird with how you apply thermal paste, your temperatures should not vary from, from run to run. Uh, but I, I use thermal pads just 
to be safe, just to add that extra layer of consistency for you guys, because it's important that you see tests on a, on a fair basis. Um, you know, obviously if I use like half a thermal pad for one test and then a full thermal pad for another, that wouldn't be a fair comparison and it would give you results that are not true uh, or are not accurate, at least in the real world. I got more than a few of you asking why I only tested with one fan. And I have a very simple explanation for why I did that. It's because only one fan was included in the box. If Cooler Master or Be Quiet had included two 120 mil fans or 140 mil fans, whatever would have fit with the cooler in question, uh, then I would have tested in both the one fan and two fan config. I did that in this video where we tested the Noctua, oh gosh, I don't even remember the name, <clears throat> the U12A, U12S, something like that. Uh, it's in that video. Anyway, that cooler came with two 120 mil fans and I tested in a single fan config and then a two fan config uh, to see how the temperature varied and to determine whether or not that second fan even mattered because in, at least in my testing, that second fan didn't change much. So if other people come out and get different results, I'd like to know the the, the scenarios. What what was the testing environment like? Um, you know, Why did you get the results you did and why did they differ from mine? Um, because I I don't think mine are the gold standard. I expect people to get different results. Um, maybe not huge, hugely different results, but you know, some variance here and there is I think a good thing and it helps us explain why we see what we see in nature. One critique I took to heart a few videos ago was someone complained that I wasn't using a case for my cooler reviews. An open air test bench is not indicative of the real world because most people use enclosed cases. Uh, and my argument at the time was, well, the delta shouldn't really change if the cooler is within one degree Celsius of each other in the atmosphere, they should theoretically be the same if they're both enclosed in the same space. Uh, but nonetheless, I used the case for the last cooler review because I want this to be more indicative of the real world and even if the results are the same it just helps people sleep better at night knowing that I am testing in a similar environment uh, to the one that they use on a daily basis that makes sense and that's good feedback. That said, a few others in the last video were asking why I wasn't using two fans or why I wasn't using standardized fan testing. Uh, and this goes back to what I said earlier, I test what is in the box. Uh, so if Cooler Master includes really good fan, I'm going to test with that fan. I don't expect people to have a really nice Noctua fan just on standby that they can use for their new cooler, especially if we're talking about a budget cooler like the Hyper 212 Black Edition or the 212 Evo. Um, those $30 coolers, are not gonna come with the best fans. I mean, that's part of the compromise. That's why you get them so cheap. Uh, but I don't expect you to spend $30 on a single fan to put on a $30 cooler. That to me makes no sense. So that's why I test with what is just in the box. There's also an incentive there. It encourages companies to include better components for the price so that when I test what is in the box, they perform better in the long run. So those are a few of the things that I wanted to address in this video. I wanted you guys to know why I do what I do. I wanted you to hear an explanation in a video versus you know individual comments because I don't feel like I do those justice. I just try to type them quickly and move on to the next one because there's a lot of comments to address. Uh, so hopefully this clears some things up. If you guys still have more questions or concerns, you can leave those in the comments below. Um, we're going to be taking our cooler tests very seriously going forward. Not that we haven't already, but you guys seem to really like those. So I'm going to try to keep those very standardized uh, in the future along with our case reviews. Um, we're talking about airflow and things of that sort. I also want to get a proper uh, sound measuring device. So I'm not sure what exactly I want to go with. If you guys have suggestions, suggestions for that, uh, link me something in the comment section and uh, I'll be sure to check those out. You guys have been awesome. Thumbs up if you liked the video. Click that red subscribe button if you haven't already and stay tuned for more content like this. This is Science Studio. Thanks for watching and thanks for learning with us.